our headquarters, we're, uh, we're on location here. Uh, report of that missing punchline. Doesn't appear to be a punchline anywhere in sight. Do not uh, see any punchline, nor do I Let's just check the, uh, check around. Check the area. What check the perimeter. Uh, headquarters, we found something here. Hold on. And uh, by the way, I don't see any comedy here either. Uh, no, just, just to be clear. Uh, absolutely no comedy on the scene. Uh, headqu headquarters, we found something, some kind of evidence here. We'll, we'll check out what this is here. Uh, it says, roll credits, uh, banana. Ban banana, okay. Ban repeat, banana. Banana, okay. Uh, White House, President, trick or treat, soup, and eat soup. Eat soup. What kind of lame thing is this, anyway? Uh, Wait a second, do you, do you see what I'm saying here? Look. I think like we're a, like... like a Oh. On, we're on TV or something like right now. Camera going. Camera rolling a, a monitor here. Okay. Still well, I think no I got something sign on my of any kind of. Oh, I actually look pretty good today. <laughs> Not so bad yourself, partner. Uh, anyway, so there's something very lame here about. So it looks like I don't know. This is the plan for the show. Anyway, I guess we uh, should we go ahead. I get tell them to. I guess I roll guess credits. Roll the credits. Hello and welcome to this very special edition of the Brian and Pam show on this beautiful fall day. Yes, it's a bit of a harvest fest. It's a harvest celebration. Celebration of fall. A little bit of Halloween, but you the know. The good parts of Halloween. The good, the good parts of Halloween, the fun parts. Not yeah. the scary, scary, nasty parts, but the fun parts. And of course, there's a jetliner going over right now, as you might be able to hear. But, uh, well, I guess we could take off our. Yeah. Our sunglasses here. Did you guys know that it was us? I mean, you probably didn't realize that this is us. Surprise! <laughs> it's Brian and Pam here. So, just having a little fun for Halloween. So, I guess we should probably tell you these police uniforms are real. They're authentic, but they're a little out of commission outdated. So Brian, Brian was a police explorer when he was growing up. So he... Yes. Um, he has actually worn this uniform since he was 14, right? 14 yeah. years old. Since and the pants still fit, so they that's still, they saying something. They still fit. I mean, it looks like a flood right now. <laughs> I mean, like they're kind of, Talk about know, the fashion faux yeah. pas. You can't really see that. I'm kicking you in the face. Oh, but anyway, uh, <laughs> <laughs> let it me just smell, give her the boot live on the like show. It smells like 1980. <laughs> I'm sorry. You know, I forgot to change my socks. So I think that's my problem. I changed everything else but the socks. Not since I was 14, but since I anyway, yesterday. <laughs> One of those days around here, uh, but the uh, the pants still still fit. They're a little tight in the waist. I have to the say. The shirt but... is was super tight on me, so I don't know what that's saying. I guess I don't have the physique of a fourteen year old boy. Fourteen year old boy. <laughs> I think that's a good thing. Yeah, that's <laughs> oh man. So uh, anyway, back anyway, on track. Back, back on track. Uh, <laughs> so and yes, we did not. Uh, that is not a. Well, we'll let you think it's a, it's a borrowed police car for now, right? That's that's right. It's yeah. a borrowed police car. We'll we'll just leave it at that. But uh, but anyway, it's been a uh, an interesting couple of weeks. We've had some some fun events in the past couple of weeks. You know, around some Halloween things already, and also a cool a cool trip that we took. That was pretty cool. Yes, my uh, my cousin had a wedding in D.C., so we decided to we left the kids here. Um, thank you, Khaki, for watching them. And yeah, thank you, Khaki. Um, and we went down, just the two of us, to D.C. And after the wedding, we decided to have a little bit of fun and go actually take the, um, the metro into the city itself and see some of the, the fun parts of our nation's capital. So uh, we wanted to show you a bit of that. Yeah, we took, took out a little piece of uh, 
that. So we'll be talking a little bit about that. We'll also talk a little bit about uh, our little bump in with Mr. Obama himself. Oh, that's right. Yeah, so stay tuned for Super that. Super exciting. Super. Did, we ran into him in the least likely place, I would say. Yeah. So that was, uh, that was fun. And uh, I'm sorry, you have something in the corner of your eye. Oh. You probably can't see it. But anyway, oh. there you go. Thank Always. you. I appreciate that. That would have been really embarrassing. I'm sure everybody would have noticed that in the, uh, in the close-ups. Oh wait, we only have one camera. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we only have one camera. That's right, one camera. Uh, so we'll also talk a little bit about an interesting Halloween event that we went to that we put a different spin on that, I'd say. Yeah, I mean, yeah, do you want to just show it or do you want to talk a we'll, little bit about we'll, our we'll get to that. perspective? Yeah, we, we, talk, we took an interesting uh, perspective on that. And then we'll talk a little bit about an interesting fall dish that we can make today. So that's kind of our agenda. Uh, this is a, a fall dish that I made that was a little bit more than a stay-at-home dad. You know, if you haven't joined us much before, I'm a stay-at-home dad to our three daughters who are six, almost five, and just turned two. And Pam's a working mom. So we have a little different perspective on life, and I have a whole new appreciation for all that those working moms and... Uh, I'm sorry, stay-at-home moms and stay-at-home dads do during the day because it's been... You saw our last episode, number, I think it was episode four. I've been drowning in laundry, so you have to check that out. <laughs> but, <laughs> so not everyone's going to have the time to do this recipe. It did yeah, take this, a little bit longer than we thought it would, It was a little bit more honest. intensive. I mean, so we're we'll, not going to uh, pretend like all the stuff is already chopped for you. Right, um, right. So we'll get, we'll get to that. Uh, but it's easier than you probably think it would be. Right. You so, have to give it... A, Give it some time. Yeah. So, but uh, but why don't we talk now? Now in front of us here we have our, our fall, you know, pumpkins and whatever this is. I guess it's a pumpkin. Uh, a gourd of some sort. Now we went to Washington D.C. like a couple of weeks ago, and I, did these bananas come back with us? Because they look absolutely nasty. Yeah, I think I think they're about ready for a banana bread there, honey. Yeah, maybe we should. Oh, maybe I'll whip up a banana bread in the next maybe episode. Maybe next time. But uh, why don't we show? We went to Washington to set I, honey, something Honey, can I just straight. bring up something? I think the squirrels are... Converging on us? Yeah, I think they're coming. Oh my gosh, there's one behind me. <laughs> He's behind coming them. over. We are going to do a, ded a dedicated squirrel episode. I'm pretty sure we have crazy squirrels in this neighborhood. One of our neighbors, a couple of doors down, I hope they're watching, says that the, the squirrel will take the acorns off the tree and throw them at the husband. Yeah. Like, seriously. Th they're kind of... And Pam saw one eating... A bird, like yeah. weeks ago, right? Like, yeah, it was it, it was dragging the bird carcass across the lawn, and then when it saw me, it took the whole bird carc. It didn't leave the bird carcass. It took the whole thing in its mouth and climbed a tree. Yeah, it's completely nasty. Yeah. So they're like anyway. If we get attacked by squirrels, modified. yes, and maybe they're intimidated by our uniforms or something. I don't know. Don't I know uh, dogs attack mailmen? Maybe uh, squirrels attack cops. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's a new thing. <laughs> Why are they getting closer? I mean, what are they doing? <laughs> If anybody has any, you know, insight, any insight on that, please yeah. let us know. Um, but anyway, yes. Oh, back to bananas. The bananas. Yes, important topics. Let's let's talk bananas. How do you peel your banana? This is important. We went all the way to Washington D.C., the center of American culture. Right. That's I me. Mean, that's mm -hmm. where it all happens. Right there in the middle of the Washington Mall, where everything converges, to set something straight about bananas. So go ahead and take a look at this. Make sure that I get the capital, like, you know, so in you there. Know this is, we've come to Washington, D.C. To, to basically show you that there are things you need to learn from Brian and Pam, how to save your life, some, some, some stress, and some time. So, so what a monkey would do, or an ape, and 5% of Americans, is to start at the bottom and easily. Did you see how easy that was? That was, a, that was one thumbnail. You just peel it back slightly, just like this, and you easily start to peel away the layers of that banana. I mean, it is so incredibly easy. You know, normally you're, you're fumbling with the other end and trying to break that. Now, I accidentally started to peel it the wrong way, and I was going to try to hide that, but there you go. But I had to get my fingers all dirty and gushy and get in there. But no, this way, there you are, a perfect banana, ready to consume for all to enjoy. So Now, this is going to be difficult to adopt. It's gonna, in it's fact, gonna be we, we often don't do it. Yeah, often I just go back to the normal ways. But it's somebody hard. taught us, and we would like to teach you, because you too can be freed from that extra 10 seconds of peeling a banana. Just think about what you could do 10 seconds a day, times seven days a week, times a year. I mean, I can't even possibly do the math you on that You could right write war and peace. Right, you could do something. So, uh, all right, so should we try our bananas together? Yeah. Okay, let's see. Cheers. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, cheers. Cheers. To the bananas, to our country. I'd say apple pie, but we're not that right friend of mine right now, so Maybe cheers. Maybe next time. Maybe next time. Enjoy. It was worth it. All right, see you guys next Brian, time. Brian, choose love. Here we go. <laughs> That's another episode to come. Bye-bye. So, <laughs> so, did you learn something new? So 10 seconds a day times however many days you eat bananas per week times your whole life. Think of what you could yeah, do. Yeah, you could do like five more loads of laundry. Or perhaps change Washington. I mean, who knows? You might have time to get down there and, and make our country better. Who knows? <laughs> but I'll be probably doing the laundry. <laughs> there goes a the squirrel. Uh-huh. Yeah. They're, they're, they're seriously flying. crazy. I'm sorry yeah. we can't turn the camera around. We would knock everything over. But anyway, I think he's probably hung up the pumpkins. Cameraman, can you just show the... Uh, oh, sorry, budget, budget cuts. We uh, don't have that cameraman. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, while we were also in uh, Washington, we thought it'd be nice to stop by uh, the White House. Yeah, we wanted to see the president. We see were thinking, president. like, while we're here, you know, like, if he was in if he was in our neighborhood and he yes. didn't stop by, we would have been so offended. So Exactly, and we talked a little bit about something... I mean, do you guys know about what we what's called refrigerator rights? when somebody that you know well enough when they come to your house that, you know what, they can go in your fridge. I think that's when you know. Right, you don't, they don't have to ask. They can just open the fridge. Yes. We've got friends, definitely, um, I'll kind of say their names, uh, like Ryan and Leah. Like, oh, well, you know, They're we totally go to their thinking, house, I have uh, no problem. You guys problem. do not have refrigerator well, rights. I, I, we actually have freezer rights. We actually broke into their freezer one time in their way <laughs> and got into their ice cream. They, they know about that, right? Yeah, because yeah, the pictures. Do. Yeah, we uh, should, if we could find that picture, we should. So anyway, we broke another house. But anyway, um, check this out. We were going to, we were thinking about going into the White House to see if we had refrigerator rights, being that we're taxpayers. But uh, go ahead and you know, take a look what happened. Yeah. That's right. Like, we should mm -hmm. be totally. If there's any chance that we could get like a sandwich from the presidential fridge. I'm looking a little bit like you need I'm to eat little, or something. I'm a little peaked. It is almost three o'clock, so I mean, do you want to go like? See the president, or do you want to just go get something to eat? Like, what's your thoughts? I mean, I won't judge you either way. <laughs> Let's just get something to eat. <laughs> yeah. You want to skip yeah. El Presidento presidential visit and go get something to eat? El Presidento. <laughs> El Presidente. <laughs> so, Alright, well, we're going to skip out on the president this time. Maybe we'll raid the uh, presidential fridge next time we're in town. Yes, but Mr. Obama. If you had food in there, we'd be coming to see you. Yes, all right, next time. So, all right, we're off to get some food, ready? Ready. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I think the, the fight in me kind of got lost around three o'clock when I was like, you know, I'm really hungry. Right? Yeah, you were looking, you were really looking like, like the life had gotten zapped out of you. Yeah. And stuff, so we decided not to go into the refrigerator of the White House, especially because some of the security things right now, we probably, I mean, if we were dressed like right. this, maybe they would have let us in, but we definitely would have been arrested. <laughs> I'm a little worried right now, actually, because I heard something out in the street a minute ago, and I'm really worried one of our neighbors are going <laughs> to call the police. <laughs> call the police on the police? On the police. Um, but it was definitely worth it that we left, because that place we found was magical. Uh, we found a sandwich shop that was... That was really, really right. good. And then no wonder who we ran into there. So take yeah. a look. This very surprised guest we ran into while we were there. Take a look. Well guys, we decided that it was more important to go and fill our bellies than it was to ring the doorbell and meet the president. But I have to say the sandwiches here are awesome. They are. We got this like uh, Mediterranean sandwich that's got like uh, hummus and little uh, roasted red peppers in it chicken and cheese and stuff, so I mean, it was awesome. I wish that... So you're saying a Mediterranean sandwich is better than meeting the president? I'd say at the time, we were both famished. We were feeling a little bit peaked. It, it was the right decision. But I do regret that we didn't get to meet President Obama, so it is a little bit sad, unfortunately. Wait, what is that? Do you have, like, a presidential march right now? Oh, that's so weird. It's, I mean, there might be somebody coming in the door here. Come, come with me. Oh my gosh. I can't believe it's coming. It is true. The president joined us here for lunch at the Pop Bellicate. It's nice to meet you, sir. We've got good taste in food. I offered all the little 
He's looking a little faded today. I think he definitely needs to get the Mediterranean. So. <laughs> All right, well, you know, it that wasn't, was as, close as, that was as close as we can get to the president, but I was still honored, and it was very unexpected, and it was still a privilege to almost meet the president, so that was, uh, that was fun. <laughs> so we salute you. We salute you, Mr. President, now that we're in uniform. We um, but so it was a great trip. I think we, we uh, it was great to get away, even though it was only one night, and we had a, we had a great time. In in, D.C. is a great city. It is. To walk a, it's a nice it's the way it's set up. It's a nice area to walk around and stuff, and so much history there. I mean, hopefully next time I'll get to bring the kids. Yeah, it seemed like it'd be great for kids too, because there's a lot more open space than a normal city. Yeah, there's, yeah, it's you know, not crowded. It's like more and parks and stuff, so a little more user user friendly. Yeah, except the metro, we had a little trouble on the metro getting around. Yeah, just stuff. because just, yeah, the just metro parts. It was uh, yeah. It was the horrible. metro itself is pretty easy. Like they the way they map it out is easier, obviously, than the New York subway. But it's like. With your passes and getting your metro card, that was the hard part. We had a little trouble with that, but anyway. Um, so yeah, so uh, the other thing that we just did this week, you know, it's just about Halloween, or it's right upon us, and our daughter, Jillian, goes to a school, a public school here, and, you know, we're not really big into the traditional Halloween stuff, would you say? You no, know? I mean, you know, dressing up, having parades, doing the cute costume stuff, love it. So cool. So cute. Uh, driving around the neighborhood and seeing severed heads and ghosts and the kids are scared to go to bed at night. Yeah, that's where it's getting a little, a little crazy. Cool. I saw one last night where it was like a, a ginormous demon coming out of a, of a house and it looks like it was probably lit up at night and stuff. Yeah. Kids, I mean, our kids are little. They're just not really prepared for that and it's hard to explain the whole right, thing. Right, because I love like, the, obviously we love the idea of dressing up. Hey, it's don't mind super fun. Impersonating police officers or <laughs> other, whatever else we can get away with on Halloween. But uh, but what we decided to do, Jillian was having a, they call it a trunk or treat at her school where all the cars come in and everyone pulls in and lines up and everybody can uh, you know, go trick or treating, you open your trunk and everyone decorates their trunk like Halloween stuff. And you could put scary stuff or pumpkins in or something. But what do we yeah, decide so, to do? So most people went with a graveyard theme yeah. or something like that. Which and, is Halloween. And we decided to go with Christmas. I figured never, never too early for Christmas. <laughs> and besides, we had like a few lame pumpkins. That's all we were going to have. That's all we had. Like, for... What if we just break down our Christmas ornaments and our, our van has like AC power? Right, so, so we, we just plug plugged in, in some lights, lights, strung them around the outside. The kids wreaths, loved it. Wreaths all over the place. They Stockings were... were hung by the booster seats with care. <laughs> I mean, we had the nativity set up. I mean, the kids that came over to the car, like, I mean, a couple hundred kids, I guess. And they were just like, trick or treat. And we're just like, Merry Christmas. Yeah, and then, and then Brian was like, the trick's on you. It's Christmas. <laughs> right, yeah, absolutely. So what did you think? The, kid, think the kids liked I it? I think the kids loved it. Yeah. And all the other cars looked exactly the same. So we were a little bit different. And yeah. we actually went overboard with buying extra candy. So the kids were coming to our car long after they were Yeah, they were long car. after. So, uh, so it was fun. But take a quick look at this. This is just a quick clip from uh, Trunk or Treat slash Merry Christmas. Christmas! What do you think about that? I think it's funny? Yep. Yep. Is this great? Is this great? Um, not too great. This covers it. Yeah, so look, we got, we got the nativity scene right here. We've got the ski lodge. We've got lots of lights. We've got our stockings hung by the uh, booster seats with Kara. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully this Molly's are there. We got our Hello. wreaths. Molly had, Molly had a lollipop for dinner. Molly's a lady, ladybug tonight, and she's eating M&Ms right now. So, having a good time. Nice weather. Everybody else has more like, like a death theme going on, or like a <laughs> Halloween theme. We decided to do Christmas in October, so. All right, guys? Let's go, guys. Everybody say Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas! <laughs> yeah. Well, there you have it. That was our, our fun little uh, Merry Christmas slash Halloween adventure. Super now, getting fun. back to the fall theme, I guess, tell me tell a little bit about this recipe and what this was here. So, I love butternut squash. I love it any way you can make it. Like, you can do appetizers with it, and I think the best thing you can do with it is a soup. So, that kind of made me... I got one butternut squash from someone at work, and then I got some one from our organic co-op. Co we got a co-op every week. So, we just decided to do that, and then combine some other awesome ingredients. And Brian, we kind of followed a recipe, but Brian went a little rogue on the, little on the ingredients. 
and, and it really came out it nice. Was, it was awesome. In fact, we have some right in front yes. of us, so we're gonna actually try it. It's a it's a butternut minute. squash bisque. It's bisque. So it's a little bit creamy, but I think it could work even if you were lactose intolerant and you didn't. Yeah, put if you remove the cream, it's still it's totally awesome. optional. We actually tried it a little bit, and it was still it was still really good. Yeah. So take a look at this uh, recipe, and uh, I hope you make this. It's a it's a great recipe. Now, as a stay at home dad, it was a little more intensive than what I could do during the day, so you might need to prepare for that a little bit. But go ahead, check this out. Yeah. Well, hello and welcome to another edition of Stay at Home Chef, where on this beautiful fall day, we're going to make a fun fall recipe using some, some things that you find uh, around the house and during the fall season, well, hopefully. You have, of course, a nice squash, which these can be a little bit intimidating sometimes, so I wanted to show you that, and a couple other things. Molly, are you going to help me today? Yeah. Yes? Molly's going to help me. Now, she does not have her fall outfit on today. She's wearing more of her, her winter flannels. So the first thing you want to do before you uh, get too carried away with cooking is he preheat the oven to 375. So we'll get that right up to 375, right about there. All right. So Molly, you want to watch me cook a little bit? Yeah. She's so soft-spoken today. Okay, you can go right here so that Daddy can do a little bit of cutting. Now, sometimes a squash can be a little intimidating and there are different versions of recipes where you can you know, cut the skin off, you can cube it and steam it. This is kind of a recipe calls for a little bit of a combination of baking it but putting it in a little bit of water so it's kind of steaming at the same time. Now, Molly, can you say squash? Squash. You want to smell it? Does it smell nice? Yeah. All right. Molly approved squash. We've got a problem. Molly approved squash. So we really want to quarter this. So what we're going to do is make sure Molly stays back. Okay, Molly, we're going to be cutting. Okay, just cut the tops off there and then just cut it in half again. So we've got pretty much quarters there. And the same thing back here. Now we just want to maybe just cut the end off a sliver there, cut that in half. So now we've got our quarters here as well. So we're going to put these face down. Well, I'm actually going to put these in the pan. You want to help me? Yeah. Okay. Why don't you help me, Molly? Okay, come around to the side like this. All right, can you put these into the pan? Face down, put the seeds down. Well, hey, she did it. Good job. Okay. Uh, two. Two. All right. Just kind of fit them in there like this. Uh, you have two more pieces, Molly. You want to put this in for me? Okay. Okay. She's pretty good. Who needs me? Okay, one more. You get it? Yeah. All right. She's pretty good. I You got them all in there, right, Molly? Do you want to just move them around a little bit like a puzzle so you can get them all to be pretty much... Face down there. I'll put it down soon. You want to put that one over there? That's good. Right okay. there. So now, See? what we're going to do is we're going to put about an inch of water in. High enough, that's about an inch there. This is going to be so good. So I'll put this right over here. Ma, you want to help me again? Yeah. Okay. So, Ma, you hold this. Now, these are just, you can pretty much use any kind of apple, but these are uh, cut and peeled apples. I'd say there's about three, four apples in here. Okay, you hold that right there. You're going to dump that. And now, I might get a little wet, but Molly wants to help. Okay, so dump that right on top. Good job. She's excellent at this. Oh, you got one more in there? Just kind of hit the bottom a little bit like this. There we go. Good job, Molly. Okay, you can put that in the sink, okay? Right there. Good job. We should be fine because now with all that water in there, this is going to have like a steaming effect because what we're going to do is we're going to cover it with tin foil and then put it in the oven for about 30 to 45 minutes. So we'll probably check it about 30, 35 minutes to see how it's looking. And then once that's in there, those apples are going to get steamed nicely as well. So we should be ready to go. So put, all right, so everything's ready. The, the oven is pretty hot now, so we're up to about 375. We're going to go ahead and put this right in our top rack, in there, so again, so for, for about 35 to 45 minutes, make sure that foil is nice and tight. Here we go, we'll set our, set our timer, and we're good to go. So we'll come back in a few minutes, we'll tell you about a couple other of the fun ingredients in our fall squash bisque. All right, looks delicious. We'll serve it with a pumpkin there. So let's see how it tastes. 
Mmm, that is excellent. I think the squash and the pumpkin blend really well together. The apple adds a little hint of sweetness and the cream just makes it really that bisque flavor. So highly recommend this. This is gonna be a great recipe for your family as well. So enjoy. <laughs> so so the, you know what, the kids loved this. They loved and it. And we I mean, served it several times because we made a, you saw how much we made. It was a big give it, pot. Give it a try, so we still have some left. And this is the end, this is the last of it, right? Cheers. Mmm, which is really good. It's Still excellent. really good. Actually, we didn't it would actually probably be good up. to freeze. We didn't try that. Maybe we could try that. We'll freeze it for next time. Because I mean, we made a big, a big vat of it. And see. So um. it's it's really good. It takes a little bit of prep time. Now, there were some problems making it. I wasn't feeling well when I was making it, so yeah, we had some issues. Uh, I had to actually stop and finish it <laughs> like two days later. So we'll tell you yes, a funny story true. about that. <laughs> Maybe we should just do an outtakes version. Yeah. of our show, and maybe we'll, we'll show you some of the outtakes, because I think there's a lot of them. <laughs> the, the, the immersion blender kept falling apart, and Immer it kept freaking me out. The immersion blender almost <laughs> blew up during that. And the, the kids the were asleep, so I was like, shh, Molly's sleeping. <laughs> and all of a sudden it was like, <laughs> And I could not say the word tongs. I was trying to say the word tongs, and I could, I just like, tongs. Wait, did we do that like, we did that like 10 takes on yeah. that, so. Yeah, so I hope you appreciate Anyway, uh, I think that's, uh, that's that it. All. We enjoyed our, our Harvest Fest. I hope you try that soup. And definitely have a safe Halloween out there this year. And uh, I think we'll cut to our... We did a special... Uh, we're doing a special goodbye with us oh, egg eating. Yes. So we'll From wave goodbye and then we're going to cut to Brian us all. And Officer Pam. Officer Brian and Officer Pam are going to exit as we cut to that. So uh, thanks for joining us on the Brian and Pam Show. And here is Officer Pam and Officer Brian. Happy fall. Happy fall. Be safe. Well, I guess uh, I guess this is all wrapped up here. The investigation is complete. Yeah, should we hit it? Let's hit it. Let's hit the beat. All right. Well, see you next time. Thanks for joining the Brian and Pam show, and you know, stay safe out there this Halloween. All right. Can I drive? You uh, are you sure you want to drive? I mean, I've never driven one before, but ah, it's like riding a bike. You know what? <laughs> sure, you can drive the you can drive the police car. Can I go lights and sirens? Ah, why not? You got to bring it back to the town quick. I told him we'd have it back, so. Hop in. You know what? I'll, I'll direct you. You All hop in. Good. All right. Just straight back now. All right, sweetie. Now come straight on back now. Straight back. Yep. Just keep on coming. All right, a little more to the left. A little more left. Sweetie, left. Left, left. Left, 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 left. Sweetie, left. Left, left. To contact Brian and Pam, send us an email at brianandpamshow at gmail.com. You can also like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and watch our YouTube channel. And don't forget to subscribe. We'd love to hear your feedback and suggestions. See you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>